Recording in progress. Okay, dokey. All right. Okay, so um, thank you, uh, those of you that are here, and um, I do appreciate you all being here today. And in case you didn't know, I'm going to introduce myself just in case. Uh, my name is Daniel Ware. I'm the genealogy librarian here at the Kentucky Historical Society. Um, and well, this program today is going to be a little bit different than what I've been doing, because typically what I usually do is I just kind of do like a presentation on one particular subject and then I have a PowerPoint and I just kind of talk and say things and, uh, you know, people ask me questions at the end or, you know, or whatever. Um, but this program, I was wanting to do kind of more of a, uh, more of a, like a discussion kind of, you know, like where you all are free to like ask me questions and we're, we're going to kind of just talk about some different like genealogy um, things, you know, if you all have stuff you all have been working on and you want to talk about that, you know, that kind of stuff. And, you know, I've got some, I've got some things that I can talk about that I can, you know, as far as starting up a conversation. Um, but then at some point I was going to kind of have it be a, like a, you know, if you all had questions for me or if you all wanted to discuss with everybody that's in the group, you know, things that you're working on and that kind of thing. And, um, and then probably by the end of the uh, program, I was going to ask you all what are some things you would like to see as far as programming wise from us, as far as like genealogy related, because um, I am going to be, uh, this is the second to last program of the year that I'm doing. And next year, we're thinking of getting some like outside speakers and, and I'll, along with myself, um, and I'll do some more presentations as well next year. Um, and so basically, you know, we want just some ideas of what the people want, you know, basically more or less, but, uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, so I'll just get the ball rolling. So, um, one of the things, one of the, I guess, genealogy, I guess, I guess trends, uh, I know that, uh, people have been getting into, and I've seen, people talk about this at more like conferences and things like that, that I've gone to. Um, but that is like the DNA, uh, you know, genetic genealogy and that kind of, that kind of stuff. Um, and I'll be upfront. I honestly have not done the DNA testing myself. Uh, but I know that that's like a, a big thing, especially here the last, you know, so many years. Um, and so like, basically I know there's like certain, you know, key types of tests that you can take, depending, I guess, on what you're kind of going for. Um, Cause I know that's basically a lot of times people go to that when they're, you know, needing to find more information than the information that they've gotten from relatives or from documents and things like that. Uh, I know there's the Y chromosome testing, which that's, you know, that would basically be you know, doing the DNA testing on any male members of your family line. Uh, and so typically, you know, you, you would get, you know, if you're not male, then you would get like a father or a brother or somebody that's the closest male relative in your family to take this test. Cause you know, it's dealing with the Y chromosome. And so usually that particular type of test is good for, if you're trying to connect two families that have the same surname and, you know, it's, it's, I feel like from what I've understood of it, it's the more, I don't want to say easier, but like, because, you know, unfortunately, a lot of, you know, female ancestors get lost and, you know, time and, and that kind of stuff. And so a lot of times it, the male, following the male line just seems a little more straightforward, unfortunately, just due to, you know, history and how, you know, with the surnames and all that kind of stuff, you know, and uh, so a lot of times you can, you know, follow like the male line by going that route. But then there's the mitochondrial DNA testing and that uh, that's the way you can really find a lot of like the female members of your line, because uh, that's dealing with uh, getting like egg cells and uh, the mitochondrial DNA from the egg cells. And so that would connect directly to your you know female ancestral line so 
that is often the way that you can, you know, if you're trying to find, you know, female ancestors in your family line. Um, and then there's also a thing called a single nucleotide polymorphism, which the from what I from what I've learned, they call it for short SNPs. Um, and that is more when you're trying to get a more broader, I guess, a net, a, bro a more broader net as far as you're uh, trying to do your DNA testing, because that's dealing with larger numbers of uh, across a, a, a person's entire genome. And basically that's how that's a better way for you to figure out like an ancestor's like ethnic background and things like that um, is also one of the downsides though is sometimes certain uh, ethnic groups like especially minority ethnic groups they have such a small number of SNPs so sometimes you can't necessarily find conclusive information for certain groups and people and also just genetic uh, genealogy testing. I mean, it just has limitations in general because there's also factoring in uh, like the provider, the test provider, because different test providers will have things set up just a little bit differently. Um, and, you know, and that kind of thing. So that's another thing you do have to watch out for when it comes to that. But it does help with on a grander scale, uh, you can basically, you know, a lot of these group, you know, you could, there'll be groups that'll form usually with, especially through these test providers that people can communicate with and kind of learn, you know, family connections with. Um, so that is one plus is you kind of get like a social um, connection, but you also, you know, you may learn about this long lost cousin or, you know, somebody and you can reconnect with them that way. Um, and also it, it's uh, a lot of scientists, they take this information and it helps them to explore the history of populations as they arose and migrated and then mixed with other groups of people. So, you know, taking like that overall, you know, look can help with migration and following family lines. And I know a lot of people have used that to see where their ancestors have traveled like over time and, and through history and things like that. So you know, a lot, a lot of that can be very useful. Um, so I was kind of wondering, what are your all thoughts? Have you all done any of this DNA testing? You know, do you have any thoughts on this experience? I've done uh, DNA testing, Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. it has its merits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think, in all honesty, uh, you, you almost, almost need to be a geneticist. Yeah, oh, yeah. To <laughs> be able to really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fully understand the results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, that was always like I need to I need to try it myself. I actually had an opportunity like a few years ago to, I think, take the ancestry DNA test. And then I just, I never got around to it, unfortunately. And like, I wouldn't mind doing it just to experience it and kind of get more of the, I guess, inside look at it, I guess. But, you know, but yeah, I kind of agree with you on that take it, 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 you know, as far as just, you know, the average person that's doing their family research, it seems a little, not want to say above, you know, your head, you know, kind of thing, but, you know, it's like, I mean, I know when I talk about different options um, that people can do as far as their family research, I'll usually mention the like DNA testing and things like that, just kind of out of a courtesy at the very least, just to say this is an option. Um, but yeah, from what I understand, I feel like it would be more of a you know, if you can't find like documentation on your family and you're, you know, or you get so far back and you're trying to, I guess, get that little extra jump or, or something. But, you know, I just, you know, I, 
I just thought I would see what other people thought about it because I know it is, you know, I go to pretty much any kind of conference, genealogy conference I go to nowadays, there's at least one speaker on it. Um, but usually, yeah, they're like the, you know, they're a DNA like expert, you know, and so they really studied up on it and and, and that kind of thing. And Daniel, uh, I have a question. Sure. Have you found that, uh, you know, you have to, once you get your results, in order for you to connect with anyone else that has done any testing, mm -hmm. you have to agree to share mm -hmm. your findings. Yeah. And even with that, I found you may, sometimes it's hard to connect with the other people that mm -hmm. may have uh, mm -hmm match yeah uh, they don't reply or you know whatever the right. issue is yeah. but i think it's dependent on that they yeah. all the little psas that you see yeah. tend to make it sound so easy <laughs> yeah. that oh i found cousin james mm -hmm. so and so but cousin jane may not have actually someone on that side mm -hmm. may not have actually done a dna test right you know so i think you have to i don't want to say take take it with somewhat of a grain of salt but mm. you have to well you can't really just yeah. think oh yeah, yeah. this is yeah. great because yeah. there's more to it than mm -hmm. just you got the results. Right. I was going to say, I'm glad you actually pointed that out because, yeah, that is like one of the biggest issues. I mean, even when I have gone to conferences and there's been discussions about like the DNA testing and that's the thing is there's all these groups that like once you found out you're a part of this particular like family, like you can you know, like request to join these special groups, but, you know, that's not always a guarantee that you're going to get in or, you know, like you were saying, I know people have talked about how they've reached out to certain, you know, potential like cousins or, you know, or something and they've never heard, you know, just went into a hole somewhere, you know, and they've never heard from them ever again. And, yeah. you know, and some people are very, you know, which I understand, you know, some people are very, you know, protective of, you know, I guess their family history, you know, they may not want to necessarily, you know, I mean, I guess if they would view somebody as like an outsider or something, you know, somehow I could see, you know, that being a issue as far as like boundaries and barriers and things like that as well. Um, and um, one thing I actually thought about when you were uh, talking about the, you know, how, you know, they have the P PSAs and, and things like that that actually kind of reminds me like I'll see like just even just commercials in general for like ancestry or, you know, commercials like that. And they dress them up so nice. And they're like, Oh yes, I found my great, great, great grandfather. Da, 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 and I clicked on this leaf and I did this and, you know, and then I've looked on stuff and, you know, I may run into brick wall after brick wall or find nothing. And, <laughs> and it's just like, they really like to dress up the, you know, the, dress it up to yeah. you know, so you're like they're pushing you know. a product oh they're yeah definitely yeah a product but mm -hmm. i find that ancestry is really guilty of that mm -hmm. uh yeah. they're pandering to potential you know uh, mm -hmm. subscribers mm -hmm. but one thing i find that uh really sort of bugs me is being a person of African American descent, mm -hmm. they well, I can't say that they're not truthful, but mm -hmm. you know, they don't tell the whole story. Yeah. I'll say yeah. that. Uh, be very honest about how difficult it is for a person of African American descent to find information. Mm -hmm period right yeah so you know to do these psas and advertisements to say oh you found uncle jim and he was from scotland and this that and mm -hmm. the other 
that's not the case with people of African American mm -hmm. descent. Right. So, you know, people need to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I found that um, it confirms my documentation. If mm -hmm. nothing else, it, it can, yeah, that's DNA true. confirms. Mm -hmm. I haven't, I don't know that I'm an expert on DNA, but it has definitely confirmed and given me some hints on other documentation to look right. for. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, when I do present DNA testing as an option, that's what I try to stress that it might at least give you like a pathway, you know, of, uh, you know, certain, you know, a certain I guess, area to look in, you know, and things like that, or you, yeah, you may find certain documentation or, you know, a particular group of people you may have not thought to look at. So, um, yeah, it, like, at the very least, yeah, it could give you, I guess, ideas, point you in certain directions and things like that, too. Yeah, that's a good point. Does anybody else have anything else on this? Because I can move on to something else if we're ready <laughs> I guess uh I was gonna say I, I have something else I can talk about or if you all just want to if you all want to talk about things that you're dealing with and you know or ask me questions about that I mean we can we can go into that it's I, I'm wanting this to kind of be more of a give and take kind of conversation you know you know go both ways and kind of you know just be more about like genealogy and like the, you know, struggles or the findings or the, you know, questions or things like that. Daniel, I do have a question for you and I don't know whether it actually fits what we're talking with today here or not. And you can tell me if it doesn't. Um, I discovered a couple of days ago on a deed for a mm -hmm. piece of land that I have inherited mm -hmm. farmland, far Western Kentucky mm -hmm. that, the the deed itself um is written so that my great aunt and uncle owned the land but mm -hmm. they got it with a dollar and i don't know however the language goes consideration mm -hmm. of uh, like how wonderful you mm -hmm. are whatever that says mm -hmm. from two people that i've never heard of that mm -hmm. it says were living at the time in 1953 in michigan and I suspect hmm. that if they got the land for a dollar and consideration or whatever that terminology is, that these people are somehow connected to them. But I don't, <laughs> like, what would you suggest about how to start even to, to come up with that? Um, I mean, usually, I mean, even when it comes to like deeds or other records that will mention like multiple people, I mean, that's a good place to like, if you can start kind of looking into like the other people, like their names, um, I was going to say, because usually I was going to say, because either like, especially if they were living, you say they were living in Michigan, the other people. They, that's, that's what it says on the date. Okay. I mean, okay. they, their, their address was listed in mm -hmm. Michigan and had, had to be not, uh, notarized from the you know mm -hmm. from where mm -hmm. they were living there apparently okay. they didn't come back to kentucky to sort out the date right okay i mean yeah i mean there's a chance that they could be relatives of some sort that owned the land and then they moved to michigan and then i guess we're finishing up right. the paperwork after the fact um i mean i would say the best suggestion would be to like research like those particular individuals like the because i'm guessing they have a do they have a different surname than yes okay. yes they do yeah i would probably um i would probably try to as far as like that like in kentucky like the county that that land is a part of i would probably try to look into see if there's any people either with that name or at least with that surname that would be like living in that area um so you so you would start with so what a census mm -hmm. document from the census maybe before that or yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay census I I like to look at censuses a lot especially if I'm trying to pinpoint people in certain places and times um, just because it's a, it can sometimes be like a quick just 
you know, like, oh, okay, they were in Mercer County in like, you know, right. 1850 or, you know, or whatever. Uh, and then you can like go and look at more stuff that's in Mercer County, you know, around the time to see if you find like specific documents with their names on it. Um, and a lot of times, you know, people will use that to kind of follow, you know, people who've migrated and moved around and things like that. Or if it was like a county change over time, you know, you to figure out where they were at a certain specific time. So, yeah, I would do something like that. That would at least be a good starting point. Okay. Yeah, Jackie. A uh, question mm -hmm. since uh, Leanne, yes, mentioned uh, her D1953. Mm -hmm. So she would be looking in the 1950 census to perhaps start with. Well, yeah. I would say that. Um... I would say, I mean, it, it technically, I mean, it might be jumping back a little too far back as far as like the time of the of the uh, deed. But I mean, you know, even if you went back to like, I mean, what it was? It? Oh, I guess yeah, 1950 is released. 50, yeah. It so released not too long. <laughs> my question is not so much about uh, her uh, people and the deed. But I mean, have there been any issues or problems with uh, that you found, you know, dealing with people for the 1950 census? Mm. Have I found any issues? Is that Was that your question? Uh, yes. Have you found in talking to customers and, and people uh, if they've had any real problems or issues using the 1950 census? I haven't come across, like, I haven't talked with anybody that's talked about having issues. I know when it first got, like, un, like released and unveiled, it was, like, basically being, like, really promoted on most of the, like, uh, like, family history database sites and things like that. Um, but I don't, I don't recall anything specific as far as like talking with like a patron or anybody about like, I mean, I would say like, I, it wouldn't be any different than like, I mean, any other census that I've, you know, maybe tried to look at myself or that, you know, other, or I've tried to help people with, you know, versus the, you know, trying to figure out how it's, what the different lists like represent and what the different numbers represent and mm -hmm. um and i haven't looked at the 1950 census in a little while but i know especially the older censuses you know there's there are the issues you, you know so that you're come across with the with like okay, the right like the transcriptions and like the handwriting go. because you know they'll write down a certain person a person's name and i mean i've seen instances in general on censuses where uh, like it would obviously this was a son but for I'm some sorry. reason the name oh. got wrote down funny and then somehow then they became the daughter yeah. and you know yeah. you know or like a name would just be completely okay. like Which almost butchered um, I mean that that's probably one of the biggest issues and then just you know the if you don't find the person and it's just trying yes. to figure out, you know, yeah, what that important. is, I mean, that's probably my two biggest things are the trying to decipher what's written down versus, you know, and what got transcribed. And then the, you know, if you can't find them, you know, and what do you do? Okay. But, uh, to say, um, I guess that's actually kind of a, I mean, a, a decent segue because I was going to kind of talk about just some, uh, give some examples of like some types of like research requests that, that I get and like how I've dealt with them just to kind of give people ideas and it might help them if, you know, they're having the same kind of issues. Um, and so a lot of them, it, it, it kind of depends on you know what you're looking for because I will have patrons that will send in a request and they 
all they're looking for is just like a death certificate or a birth certificate. They're just trying to find that one name or that one connection. I know, especially with like uh, people that are trying to get into the DAR or the SAR, they're usually trying to find a connection between like a father and son uh, to prove, you know, something. So a lot of times, especially those, like, I feel like, it's kind of one of those like more than meets the eye kind of research requests, because usually when I get those, they're more wanting just like one document that like they'll want like a will or something like that, that'll put them to these two individuals together. And, you know, normally that's a pretty straightforward, you know, you just like, okay, I'll just find this will and I'm done. And, you know, it's just a quick, you know, <laughs> But, you know, a lot of times when it comes to these, I know in my personal experience, it, it can be a little tougher than that because one, if, you know, obviously if these individuals, like especially the fathers had fought in the Revolutionary War. So, you know, a lot of these records are going to be pretty early on. Um, and especially if it's vital statistic records, uh, like Kentucky didn't start like really keeping track of that until 1852. And then basically between 1852 and 1910, uh, it was very, it was kind of a roller coaster, hit or miss. Uh, and from what I've learned from, uh, learned, uh, you know, not too long ago that, you know, in some cases, uh, I guess the state or whoever was the deciding factor of creating um, this whole idea of recording the vital statistics like they would go for a few years and implement it. And then I guess things would fall apart and then they would just disband that and like quit doing it for a few years. Um, I also learned also that, you know, the people that went around and took the information uh, were not necessarily compensated very well. So sometimes they, you know, I guess may have not tried as hard as they could have, you know, and, you know, and I mean, obviously, especially, you know, back in the day, you know, people, you know, people didn't necessarily want to be, you know, known or, you know, they kind of want to keep to themselves. So I'm sure some people just didn't want to cooperate, you know, with getting their information taken and, um, you know, and things like that. And then, um, but like, you know, if you're dealing with people that are, you know, just looking for like a, I mean, even like with the DAR, SAR, if they're just looking for like a will or something, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, these people either didn't leave a will or the will has just disappeared or it's been destroyed. Um, and so typically when it comes to that, um, because usually, um, especially they're usually pursuing like our, our more uh, bigger like research requests, which is like our higher level where, you know, there's more research that we're having to do for this. Um, you know, I'll typically try to see if I can find any kind of alternative documents because um, that's another key thing. Sometimes when you're getting stuck and you can't find like a birth record, you know, I may try to look for a, you know, if if the person got baptized as a child, uh, I can't remember if it was Fayette County, one of the counties uh, in a book that we've got, it's actually a, for a particular church and it's this uh, pastor or preacher and he's like recorded who he has baptized and he he seemed to do pretty good at like actually talking about like mentioning like basically i guess when they were born and then you know he would give like who is who the parents were and things like that so sometimes you might get lucky and look for something like that that'll still give you like a parent's name or a, you know a date of birth or something like that um, or even worst case scenario you know you might get an age you know based on that particular moment and then you can kind of deduce you know um you know and sometimes um you know also have people that will just really they're just trying to find connections with their you know with particular groups of people and like why they arrived at a certain place when they did um you know and things like that and a lot of those cases you know I'll try to look for you know either like deeds, you know, if somebody sold land right before a certain period, you know, that might be a sign that they were getting ready to head out and and leave for a, you know, a new place, you know, and especially who they're selling to. I mean, kind of like with, you know, Leanne's, uh, you know, 
her what she's looking at you know it's like sometimes you know fathers and sons may have sold to each other or relatives of some sort uh and there's also um especially when it comes to groups of people migrating or moving i mean you can also look at maps and things like that and uh you know, especially if you can figure out like certain points where they, you know, were along the trip and you can look at the maps to kind of, you know, see where they may have been going to and things like that. And certain maps and atlases I know that we do have here at KHS, uh, they might also include like homesteads uh, and, you know, you, you might get to see a little, uh, I know one that's for like Henry County and Shelby County from like 1882 like it gives you homesteads and it'll there's a some pages that'll have like charts of all the people living in that particular district and it'll tell like what their occupation was uh where they were originally from you know how long they had been in that particular location at the time that you know that the map or the atlas was made uh you know so sometimes things like that can help you with you know that kind of researching yes are there uh, these atlas and maps, mm -hmm. do they go back to like uh, what I'm looking at, uh, say back 1790, 96? Uh, uh, it, depending 18, on the county, we do have some, some like that go back that way. Lexington yeah. is Jefferson County, correct? Fayette County. Fayette County, okay. Yeah. I, I, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, yeah, it, we definitely, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I know, yeah, we definitely have like, now I know, uh, I know it's at least just for general Kentucky maps, I know we do definitely at least have stuff that goes back to like, like 1780s before it was even a state or like 1790s, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure like, especially like Fayette County. So would there be uh, I guess I, my question really is to go back that far with that. Are there any homestead maps that you mentioned that would be like around the Lexington area? I can't recall for sure. I do know that because some of the maps, unfortunately, a lot of the maps I've seen are more just like talking about like the landmarks and things, and they won't necessarily show you like the people. Um, like it'll be like talking about like the rivers and the creeks and you know mm -hmm. things like that. But um, I can't recall off the top of my head. The only reason why I mentioned like the Shelby and Henry County 1882 ones because like that's one of the few that I've seen it like specifically has that. Uh, but, the, you know, and depending, I mean, the, the maps we've got, I mean, there's kind of different ones that kind of show different types of things. So, uh, and I have, honestly, I haven't looked at them in, in, in a little while, but, um, but I mean, I know we do should have some that are at least fit the right time frame. I just don't know necessarily, you know, because we also have some maps that just that, you know, they're more of like about showing like the cities or the towns and it'll show you where people are living in those but it, it kind of it kind of depends on the the county and and you know and that and that kind of stuff. So what a, I have a person that mm -hmm. migrated well in eighteen oh five. It shows that he had a business. He's mm -hmm. a merchant in Lexington. So I would think that. Uh, there has to be some document or something that would indicate like the merchants or whatnot. What, uh, or is there such a, a animal? Um, I think, I think there are, like, I know there's maps now. I I haven't seen necessarily one here, but I know I've seen um, maps that are more tied specifically to like particular like trades. Like it'll show like a certain area and it'll be like timber or it'll be that kind of thing. And I mean, it's not really specific on like individuals, um, but 
I I don't recall anything specifically that would well, I mean, besides like, I mean, if you're lucky to find like a uh, map or atlas kind of like I was describing, because that it did have a chart that told you what an individual's occupation was. Um but yeah, I map wise, I mean, besides, you know, looking at like stuff like tax lists or censuses, I mean, right. I don't know of anything specifically map wise that would like besides, you know, you might get the one that has like a chart that'll tell you who was living in these homesteads and what their occupation was or, you know, or you could get an idea on like that map I was telling you about just a second ago of, OK, if like that area or that county was mainly this particular uh like trade or this particular type of industry, you know, there's a chance that, you know, your ancestor may have worked in that in industry, you know, but that would be more, I guess, guessworking, I guess, you know, than true fact or, you know, or anything, but. Mm. So Daniel, I'm a complete newbie at this. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> I'm a complete newbie. Um, I actually live in California, but mm -hmm. I'm from, um, um, my dad had a business in Frankfurt okay. and I, I was born in Louisville mm -hmm. and I'm actually here for a month because one of my aunts has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Oh. So I spend my time with her walking. Mm -hmm. And of course, 50 years ago is much more present to her than today. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we've become the cemetery walkers oh, yeah. and it's, and it's made me very interested in um, going back. My dad's side, goes way back. I had an aunt who did it all the way back, but my mom's side was not very literate. Mm. And uh, like one of the first, I, I have actually gotten back to 1850 pretty easy just with the cemetery markers. Right. Mm. But like one of the great, great, whatever grandmothers, she's got a really common name. Her name was mm. Mary Johnson and she yeah. married a Mitchell. So yeah. like, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, I've had that trouble just even with like research requests I've had come in. Um, I know at one point I was looking for a, what was it? A, I think a, like a John Cunningham who had, I think he had fought in the revolutionary war. And of course we've got some books that the DAR have put together as far as like, you know, uh, veterans who were, you know, buried and things like that. And uh, I found a, a segment and it was like five different John Cunninghams and who they married and things like that. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, when it comes to that, I mean, I feel like you, you kind of have to like, you almost have to kind of like dig around and, and, you know, if there's other particular, you know, people connected to them, like parents or, you know, or yeah. children or things like that. I can know. find the children, but not the parents. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So far. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and then my other question, what you can think yeah. about is I'm leaving to go back home to San Diego in mm -hmm. October. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, and almost every relative I have is Kentucky period yeah. mm -hmm. in a discussion. I did ancestry many years ago because mm -hmm. of my dad mm -hmm. and my largest DNA group is early Kentucky settlers. Mm -hmm. So, gotcha. so <laughs> it's pretty, so what resources might there be that I can access from home in California? Do you have any ideas? Daniel, can I make a suggestion to her? Sure. Yes. One, one of the <laughs> things that, that I discovered several years ago through my son was the website Family Search that's mm -hmm. connected to the Mormon Church. That's right. Okay. You can create a an account there for free. And if you begin putting in information for the people that you know, there's a really good chance that someone else has done that someone that you don't know has mm -hmm. done more research that may open up just a world of information to you just okay. from that and that you can access that from any any place and you know that and i understand my mom's family most of them are buried in the same cemetery we're going monday to take pictures of the gravestones so i'll have a bunch of information that i never knew before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah but that I, website is really good and it's free. i got it written down thank you yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to say. That was the first thing I could think of as far as like something that you can yeah, access anywhere and it's free and, and, and that kind of stuff. And I come back here about once a year, I guess yeah. if I save up my information and then I've been to the Kentucky History Center, my mm -hmm. dad's office was right there on Capitol Avenue. Oh, um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. 
yeah I'm trying to think of other one that's the Daniel thing. Yeah. excuse me could I suggest to Dana I don't know who uh here has perhaps uh used or are aware of a database that the Library of Congress has is called Chronicling America mm, yes. and it's a free newspaper database mm -hmm. now uh it lists each state and it lists the newspapers that they okay. have and you can actually go into it and read the newspaper it will tell you the years that uh they have the holdings for like an example i had been researching uh one of my ancestors, I could not find uh, when she died. And she's from, they were from Frankfurt. And uh, there's a newspaper, the Frankfurt Roundabout. And I got a hit. And there was an obituary for us. Solved a big problem. Knew when she died, where she died, and all of that. So that, that's that, a very, that's very helpful. Resource. That's helpful. I know nothing. So that's very helpful. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was say. Yeah, that would be very helpful because I was going to say because another uh, resource that I do use quite a bit is is looking at trying to find newspapers. Um, you know, if it's like somebody's obituary or, you know, a death that you're looking for, you know, sometimes you won't necessarily get to find a death record because like I you know was mentioning earlier you know depending on the year and the county you know it may have just not gotten recorded or you know there may have been a, a courthouse fire or some kind of you know something happened right and you know so sometimes I'll go to look for obituaries you know because sometimes I mean and the thing with obituaries is they're kind of hit or miss too unfortunately because I have seen some that will give you like you know, who that person's parents were, you know, it'll give you like where they were from, you know, but then there'll be ones that are very like, you know, just tells you that they basically died on this date and that, you know, their body's going to be at this, you know, son's house, mm -hmm. you know, or something, you know, very, you know, minimal, you know, so it, you know, that can be hit or miss, but, you know, it can be an alternative as far as like death record, you know, it, I mean, it's, obviously not going to replace a death record especially in certain circumstances like if you know you know depending on you know what you're needing needing it for but if you're just wanting to get i guess the information you know it's at least something um but uh but yeah um and anybody else have any questions anything else they want to talk about anything they can think of <laughs> Oh, Dana, newspapers.com, that is a subscription database. That one, yeah, it is. Chronicling America is free. Okay. The, yeah, so beware of that. You can get okay. a hit and it says newspapers.com, but you got to pay for it if you want to okay. see it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I haven't even tried the the Family Search Mormon one yet, and I understand that's probably a good place to start. Oh, it's great. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. You also, uh, Leanne, I'm not sure if you've uh, had the occasion to look at uh, whatever state or wherever you're looking, where they actually have the original deeds and that type of thing say like for Frankfort, which is Franklin County, if you do a search under catalog, it will tell you all of the documents and things that they have for Franklin County. Yeah, that, that was interesting. I actually spoke mm -hmm. with a lady, in, it's in Ballard County and I'm okay. in Lexington. So I spoke with the lady there. She was extremely helpful got to what I needed for right now and because I didn't realize until I actually laid eyes on the deed itself 
that I had names that I had no idea who they, and I, I didn't know who owned it, but it was mm -hmm. where they got it that I didn't recognize those names. And uh, I assume that they're uh, connected to my, my great uncle's family, which is not my, you know, he married into basically my family and I don't know a ton about them. And I did get on family search to see if I could quickly connect the dots. And so far I haven't. So it's a little further back or they just were for whatever reason, I don't know, neighbors, some, some, there's a connection there that right now I haven't found because it doesn't make sense that they wouldn't have gotten some sort of payment for that land if they were just Joe Schmo off the street. So mm. there's, there's, there's a connection. I just don't know what it is yet and didn't know I needed to, I mean, I don't have to have it, but now I'm curious as to who are these people and yeah. what happened to them. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would definitely look, like try to investigate those people, like, or see if you like see any of like the surnames or any kind of names related to them in that area, and you know, especially in relation to your ancestors. Um. Yeah. Okay. Well, as I say, unless anybody's got any more questions, I'm going to open this up now for. Um, I said something about it at the beginning, but um, this is like the second to last program uh, genealogy program I'm doing for this year. Um, now next year, I'm going to try to like, I'm going to do more presentations, but I'm also going to try to bring in some like outside speakers to talk about certain uh, subjects. And so I wanted to ask you all, you know, if there's any particular subjects or anything you want us to address you know any kind of presentations you know anything you're interested in learning more about next year i would be very interested in anything that's virtual because i will be a long way away <laughs> well i was gonna say um yeah my programs uh besides this one are usually hybrid so it can be so perfect so yeah they're you know i set up the zoom and then you know, and then I stand out in the, our main library area for the people that physically come in. So, so to get on the mailing list, I just join the society or something. Um, Is that what we do? Yeah, you can. Um, I believe, uh, as I say, you can probably uh, call like our main front desk and they can get you set up as far as like membership or, or you know, and things like that. Cause there is, yeah, I believe there is like a newsletter that gets sent out okay and i'll be in frankfurt next week so if i just go to the oh, main desk yeah. i could do that yep yep okay that'll work. yep oh, okay daniel yep. uh one of the in your upcoming uh, next year mm -hmm. uh is it possible to have a speaker that addresses some of the issues uh researching African American oh, history. Yes. Yes. I don't look like that, but I'm interested in that too. I think that's part of my history based on what I've learned from ancestry. So I would I would be interested in finding that out because I think that might be some of my roadblocks is because mm -hmm. that's where they were trying to hide it. Right. Well, <laughs> you know, people did what they had to do. Then. Absolutely for mm -hmm. whatever reasons they mm -hmm. felt they needed to. So, you yes. know. But I would be interested for that too, because I do know that's part of my heritage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually, uh, uh, Jackie, I, I'm glad you point that out because I know there's uh, definitely, there's one speaker I'm going to try to contact. Um, I've been in contact with her on and off this past year. And uh, I think she would, because I know she basically she talks, she goes to groups and goes around and talks about her genealogy. And she talks about, um, I believe she, I believe she did a, did she march with Martin Luther King or she, or she did a march here, I think. What's her name? Uh, it's uh, Charlene Hampton. I think I've met her. I, I I know she's got like a middle name or something. I, I that's not like the full name, but <laughs> I mean she's a really nice lady. I've talked to her a few times, and but she's very passionate about her her ancestry. And uh, mm -hmm. but we've got a book that she's written about her family and our family history area. Um, 
And so I thought, well, she would be great to come and talk just at least at the very least about her own experiences and things like that. You know, there is also the African-American genealogical Kentucky can, group yep, mm -hmm, also. Yep, yep, yep. That's what I was going to say. Is that what it's called? It's that's it. I I, I may have it uh, it's, a little well because I think African they're American. Because it's no, like, it's K A A Kentucky African American genealogical uh, group. Society yeah, or something. Like okay, that. I've got it written yeah. down. Thank you. Yeah, I, I was going to say that's a good point too because I have I have suggested people check with them for certain you know mm -hmm. research you know and stuff like that too so that's yeah that's another good point um i could yeah try to contact them in the future to see if daniel you mentioned um conferences are mm -hmm. are there like sessions or topics or whatever that are consistently coming up at, in conferences other than the the dna that you know i'm sure is of interest to some folks but Obviously yeah. not much to me, but other topics that would be like um, ones that have come up that you feel like we would, you know, would benefit from. Yeah, there's I know there's usually somebody that talks about like cemeteries and things like that. And uh, now I did go to one a few years ago and uh, the man there, he talked about like how to like the maintenance of it. But. Uh, but then, you know, people will also just like talk about um, like we actually had somebody here back in June, I believe uh, he had won an, a, a history award that we uh, gave him because uh, it was for Kentucky History Day that we had back in June. And he talked about all the work that he was doing for uh, like maintain like because he was he did a lot of especially like veterans, like Civil War veterans, like trying to like basically get like those cemeteries like saved and get them in better shape and um and i know he's been doing work also i believe with like african-american uh graves especially ones that fought you know and things like that and um i think he's actually in like north carolina now but he like is originally from kentucky and then he did a lot of work in kentucky and then he moved to North Carolina, I think, to be with family. And then he just kind of started doing that there. And, um, but I know he, uh, but yeah, he talks specifically about, I guess, like, especially like these cemeteries that, I mean, cause there's all sorts of them that are just on farmland or they're, you know, in the middle of some woods and, you know, stuff's growing up around them. And, uh, and, you know, it's, and like he pointed out, like, you know, before they started, you know, working on this one particular cemetery, you almost didn't see it. Like you were just like you ended up you're standing on top of somebody's grave and you didn't know it, you know, broken tombstones and, you know, or not a tombstone at all or, you know, and, and things like that. Um, I mean, so something like, you know, related to like cemetery work or, you know, something like that could maybe be something because I do see that pop up around a lot sometimes. Or forgotten cemeteries. Yeah, forgotten cemeteries. Yep, yep, yep. Like the one in Frankfurt. Yep, yep. I know um, before I, uh, the job I had before I worked here, um, I worked at uh, the Spencer County Public Library and our historical society group that we had, our local group, like they were starting to do all these going around and finding like pioneer cemeteries and cemeteries that were like up on hills and forgotten about and cleaning them up and things like that. And I believe they were doing an African-American one as well. Um, the last I had heard and doing a lot of cleanup work and getting people to, you know, come together to, you know, work on those and, and kind of and trying to get signage and things like that too, for a lot of these places. Um, before yeah. I moved to California, I worked for the Department of Health Services in Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. And when they built the new building, which now is probably really old. But um, the thing that blew me away as a young girl was the cemetery in the back of all the kids who had been born to the inmates. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. like, ay, ay, ay. Yeah. Yeah. 
actually that actually kind of reminds me too um of cemeteries and in, in, well, in interesting places i guess you could say um like here this past year i've actually been to the the louisville zoo a couple of times and i guess like the land originally i guess belonged was like a farm or or something i'm not entirely sure but like you go to the zoo and there's a little like fenced around like cemetery for these like i guess early i don't know if they were like some pioneers that and you know and, and but it's just this little like walled in uh, you know you can walk into it and things like that and there's a big you know rock sign that has the list of the names and kind of explains what it is but it's just in the middle of this zoo <laughs> but uh you know but i think that got erected in 1990 i think is what it said so i guess they had like a okay. special ceremony for it and back then i guess but I just, the couple of times I've been there, I end up seeing it and I just, you know, stop and look at it and just marvel at just where, you know, you'll find cemeteries at, you know, and things like that. But, you know, that's basically almost the same thing they did in Frankfurt mm -hmm. with the Forgotten Cemetery. Mm -hmm. It's up at Fort Hill now, mm -hmm. just in yeah. the middle of uh, uh, nowhere. Mm -hmm. And they have this wooden fence around it with, uh, they don't even list the names. They just say 250 mm -hmm. persons right. were reinterred right there. And, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll keep my <laughs> thoughts on that to myself. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's interesting to mm -hmm. uh yeah see how they uh do stuff like that mm -hmm. right yeah. right well it is think about that time um does anybody else have anything other suggestions for programming that they'd like to see any themes the census oh yeah yeah that is a good point not necessarily, you know, I'm, I'm not specifically speaking of 1950, right. but the just census in general. in general. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I found uh, just, uh, you know, being at a library or mm -hmm. historical society, a lot of people don't know how to, number one, find the census. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some, a lot of them don't know how to read and uh, really absorb what's on the census. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be helpful. Um, and just maybe someone like, well, you, Daniel, that mm -hmm. could suggest to people some of the resources that yeah. they could uh look for like mm -hmm. tax lists, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the census, this, that, and the other. Like Dana says, she's new to doing yeah. this. Yeah. So yeah. just well, like a little, you know, uh, list mm -hmm. guide. I, I, that's exactly what and my cousin the other day, we were looking for, one of my cousins told me that there was a sign on the side of the building that my grandfather and my great-grandfather ran a uh, Breckel Press in downtown Louisville mm -hmm. and she said there's a sign on the building that's still there and fading so we said okay let's go take a picture right oh, yeah. and we, we couldn't find it and then that because there's all kinds of one-way streets down there I think mm -hmm. we drove mm -hmm. right past it oh, but yeah. anyway I, we got home and she looked up and she found an old permit for the uh, business oh. so I didn't even ask her where she found that but that yeah. kind of information would be really helpful yeah Daniel, for me, it would be helpful for a little bit slower version of exactly what's available there in the library in Frankfurt. What yes. if I come there? Where do I find various mm -hmm. things? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm, and I'm Dana, sure. I'm not from Kentucky. I'm not oh. in Kentucky. I'm in Maryland. Oh, really? Yes. Huh. 
so I have to make uh, try to make a pilgrimage to <laughs> Frankfurt every well, so Well, all often. my relatives, all my relatives are still here. So there's a good reason for me to come back once in a while. But I've been in California for over 40 years. <laughs> You're from San Diego? I, I live in San Diego now. I married a native Californian, and that's why I moved there. But I was born in Louisville. My dad had a business in Frankfurt. I mean, you can't. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if not living here, I turn around the corner and I run into a cousin or a relative. <laughs> there are so many of them. <laughs> What's funny, ironic is I have relatives in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, except for my kids. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I I really, really wish I was in Kentucky where I could, you know, go to Frankfurt and Lexington. Um, mm. But it's not that easy. No, you know? and I come anyway, so it'd be nice to know where to go look. So what mm -hmm. uh, Leanne suggested would be very helpful. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I think that is about it. So I guess uh, thank you all for being here today. I really appreciate it. And um, I was hoping that it would create some kind of organic conversation there. So that seemed to do pretty well, I feel like. So I just kind of, I kind of, you know, was like, you know, I, I just want to do more of a let other people talk and, enter, you know, provide you know if they have things that they're looking into and, and you know kind of you know what people are looking for you know and that kind of thing so I do appreciate you all being here Daniel before we take off can you do yeah. a quick commercial for the next session that you're doing yes it's going to be about um well since basically November through December you know there's the holidays and that's why we're having next month be the last one just because you know we'll probably be dead you know towards the end of the year with holidays and <laughs> and stuff um so it's going to be more geared towards um i guess the holidays and like it is going to be more of like a not really a, a diy but like <clears throat> kind of i guess ideas as far as like what you can do for the genealogist in your life when it comes to the holidays, I guess, you know, like whether it's, you know, gift ideas or, you know, or certain, you know, things that would really connect with them, I guess, for the holidays. Um, that's kind of the general gist of it, I believe. But Make one of your suggestions. They can gift uh, okay. uh airline ticket. Or <laughs> oh, that, that is a good point. Hey, that, that, that's a good point, you know? Yeah. I yeah. mean, I know that I know, especially like the, you know, ancestry and a lot of them, you know, like we were talking about at the beginning with the technology stuff, they really push like, well, the, yeah, the subscriptions, but then also the, you know, hey, you know, get your DNA, you know, you yeah, know, kind of thing. they do too. that, especially around the holidays too. And, but yeah, the airline tickets to travel to where your ancestor mm -hmm. went to. I mean, that, yeah, that's, in, yeah. And Daniel, do, do, do ancestry because, what I grew up thinking we were, our ethnicity was nothing like what it was. Oh, yeah. And my family's been in the same place for 150 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know uh, there was a girl I used to work with at one of my old jobs and we were talking about um, like the DNA test and stuff. And and she made a point that I don't remember if it was her grandfather or somebody, but he was very distinctly like a particular like ethnicity I don't remember if it was like a like I don't remember what it was but it was like they like knew for a fact and then like they did the testing and of course they bring in the ethnicity percentages and it was like yep. that that one that they're like oh this is definitely and it was like really lower than you know it was like really threw them off on their expectations yes. and things yes. like that. I remember my dad when he found out he goes how disappointing <laughs> but it is what it is right i mean yeah you know yeah but yeah all right well uh thank you all for being here um and yeah if if you do decide to come to the next one it'll be uh october 14th 11 to 12 and 
basically you can uh, register, you know, like you did before. And, but that one should be hybrid. So if there is anybody that does have the strong desire to physically come to KHS, you know, then, you know, they can do that as well. So send me the plane ticket, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right well we're gonna finish this up uh thank you very much you all have a great day. thank you thank okay. you take care bye bye bye, -bye. bye.